Yeah. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Hukalo TV Human Colony Saturday webinar. Today we have Kim Louise of Multiverse Channeling. She will be channeling today. And um, I have a special announcement about uh, the Reiki 3 class. The Reiki 3 class is postponed for one week. Instead of starting on the 14th, it will be starting on the 21st. For those in the class, please adjust your schedules. And then over to you, Valerie. Okay, today we have in the room Holly, David, Rowie, Salish, Shiny Sean, Sheer, Shran, and myself, Valerie. Good morning, everyone, and welcome, Kim Louise. Hello, sorry it took me a second to get off mute. Hi, everybody. Thank you, everyone, for being here. Um, I would just like to elaborate on, on something. I've been asked a question a few times this week. Uh, um, some people have approached me. They're very curious as to how private sessions are different to public ones. And um, I thought I'd address it publicly because it's true for all channelers. Um, it's, it is a more unique experience. It's a more specific experience. Public channels addresses a group, and it's likened to I explain it like a classroom arena. So I just want to make that known at the moment because it's a question that's hanging around, um, and maybe other people have been wondering as well. Um, thank you to Dan again for being here, and Valerie, uh, Jim, we love you. Um, we want to say a shout out to Sabrina also and Rowie, of course, and all our regular wonderfuls in the room. Um, we've got someone pretty familiar coming through today. Um, I'm sure you'll all recognize him. Um, is there anything anyone else would like to say? No? All good? Okay. Well, I'll take off for a bit uh, and I'll see you soon. Okay, well, thank you very much. <coughs> Greetings. Greetings. It's the Alma Talk. Hello there, Valerie. Oh, hi, Alma Talk. It's very nice to see you again. Mm, thank you. Thank you. It's wonderful to be here. Oh, do you have any messages for us today? I do. Oh, yes. There's a subject I'd like to address. I'd also like to shine a light upon the idea of energy that goes along with these ideas as well. Now, humans, on a day-to-day -day basis, there tends to be three different kinds of energy that moves you through your lifetimes. And first of all, let's look at the idea of what drives you. What drives you? What is it that when you wake in your mornings, your conscious mind designs and creates how you are going to move through your day? It prioritizes. You don't give much thought to how much it's something you want to do or not. It is simply almost robotic. So what is it driven by? Your conditioning, your expectations, the social arenas that you move in, the materialism. This is one way that many humans spend their lifetime. It can be actually a very empty experience. I wanted to point that out. Now, another way in which humans move through their days is what you would call dragging. They drag themselves as if there is a rope on their heart and they are just dragged through experiences consistently pushing themselves 
consistently doing things they wish not to do. They're in a situation where they believe they are using a form of self-discipline to create whatever it is the outcome is. It's something that you simply do not resonate with. When you are being dragged through your days and dragged through your life, obviously this is not healthy. Now there is one other energy where your lights shine bright and this is the one that propels you. What propels you? Humans feel this energy very much, interestingly enough, in the back side of their body, their buttocks, their lower spines, it will often awaken Kundalini, but it is effortless. Energy is propelling you. You are not having to use your own energy to move yourself. Whatever you navigate towards, when you are in this space and you are moving forward easily with enjoyment, this is where you can look deeply at why you resonate with this experience and decide what it is that keeps you in that state. Once you, once you find that state, my friends, please build your lives around it. It will take time, of course. If you are still being dragged, if you are still driven, it's going to take time to adjust to being propelled permanently, effortlessly. That is fine. But I want you to recognize that you are propelled. There is energy abundant to each of you provided by what you would call the universe, source, your God, whatever it is you choose. And this is where your talents lay. Your talents, my friends. There are many instances in your lives where I look and I see you feel limited in the idea that there is only this many talents that exist on your planet. You either have one of these talents or you don't. You either strive or you don't. Did these decisions where you decided that you did not have a special talent, were moments in your youth when you wanted to go and commune with the grass, the trees, that was feet away from you and the parent pulled you away and you felt that this was not something that you should be drawn to anymore. Do not commune with the plant life. In these moments, these moments, this is where you lose your ideas of talents, your uniqueness, what propels you, pulling you back, pulling you back, redirecting, guiding, conditioning. There is also another point in a human's life where they may actually experience a limitation that is going to stay with them for the rest of their lives, perhaps many lives. And that is the moment when you look at your human parents and you actually understand that they are only human. This is a reality that is influenced by much feedback that goes on, especially in these parts of your world. The conditioning, the designs, the limitations, the education system, all of these things, traditional things, all of them you still subscribe to, though you do wish for change. However, you know best how these things have affected you. These limitations that are pulling you back, withdrawing you. So you define yourself. My friends, every single one of you has a talent that is exclusive to you. It is something that it is solely for you to excel at and be recognized for the world, your planet Earth. There is ample room for the billions of you that live upon it to find their talent unique. I want you to please 
spread outside the limitations you have created yourself with your minds, with your energy, with your hearts. Where is it? What is it? Reflect, look back at the child that was taking those moments and they were not resonating with them, where they lost the idea that they were limitless in what they could achieve. In the idea of the saying that you hold, the world is your oyster. This is true for all of you. No matter your age, it doesn't matter. Now, beyond the talent idea, the fact that you each have a wondrous talent, you are each individually a genius. A genius, yes. Another word reserved for an elite group on your planet. It is not an elite, unique word saved only for a select few because they function within the confounds of what you define as genius. This again is conditioning. But I'm telling you all, please remove it. You are geniuses. You are each talented. You are each unique and you each have something that propels you. Now that you can make the distinguish, excuse me, now that you can distinguish between the ideas of what drives you, what drags you and what propels you, that sensation, I will repeat myself, that sensation that comes from behind, not the one that's pulling you. It's the one that's supporting you. This is the direction for you. This is where the journey less travelled will appear. For you are each unique. If you choose the journey less travelled, then your arrival will be somewhere magnificent and one that no one else has travelled. Finding your talent and your genius, fulfilment happiness, joy, and what does that lead you to? Bliss. It leads you all to bliss. You are all so deserving. As humans on this planet, you are so deserving to be recognised, truly recognised and understand how great you really are. It gets lost in the dragging, it gets lost in the conditioning. I'm asking you, reclaim it. Reclaim it. Find what it is that's propelling you. Pursue it and become the genius you are. So that is my message for this moment. Thank you, Amatar, for this beautiful message. And now we have Rowie. Would like to ask a question, please? Yes. Uh, more of a statement, really. <clears throat> I'm talking about greetings, Amateur. It's been a little while since we've spoken. Yes, sorry. Um, Hello. Yeah, it's good. Um, interesting, you're talking about that subject of um, what the daily things you do in your life. And, like you said, what you do. So I was reflecting on what I do in the daily routine. When I wake up, usually the first thing is um, eating. That's a very human thing to do, to get hungry. Uh, quick wash or whatever, um, clean teeth. But the routines are the interesting thing. Um, uh, usually I call Kim, <laughs> if I'm not there. And then it's usually straight on with emails and the projects that I'm involved with. It's, um, it's exciting, it's fun a lot of the time. If it's not exciting, I move on to something else. It always seems to be the way. Um, but it can hinder um, completion sometimes. That's the only thing yes. personally I would say. Um, I have mindsets and meditations of, um, of many ones in the daytime as well to keep me going. And then I usually start learning or reviewing something that I need to go over. Um, something that's going to create either um, the dreams I want or the things I'm thinking about manifesting. So what was interesting though, 
after you were saying that, you started talking about the back of the body. Yes. Correct. Correct. And what I've been, uh, a good teacher of mine, a friend, um, teaches this. He's a Taoist teacher, and he teaches being in the back of the body and being in the back of the head and imagining that all the senses are leaned towards the front of the body, going forward, your eyes, your ears, everything's focused on the forward, going forward. And also the, the front of your body is very vulnerable. All your organs are exposed, all your you have all your feelings in the front of the body usually. And it's interesting you were talking about feelings in the back. And sometimes they're the most deep rooted feelings as well in the back. Yeah. But the back's very protected if you look at it. As well, mm -hmm. everything's very protected from the back, apart from the kidneys. Yes. And it's just very interesting that you talk about that. And I don't know if you have anything more you want to talk about that about about maybe the difference of being in the back of the body and imagining yourself from that higher perspective, looking upon yeah. yourself and what you're doing, and reminding yourself every day of that, and looking at your actions, looking at what you're doing. Yes. Yeah. There's a very simple example that I can share with you. If you wish to comfort someone, let us say you are around a human and they are distressed. If you wish to comfort someone, one of the kindest things you can do is actually place your hands at the base of the spine and hold them there with a certain amount of force that if you comfort someone using this structure of your body, they will automatically begin to feel a sensation of support. Now this is a biological reflex. It's not something you're necessarily aware of, but it is definitely built into each of your DNAs. You'll notice that very often when a mother comforts a child that she will be touching that part of the young baby's body. She will be nursing, even with the child, the back to her front to comfort. The child feels comforted. It feels that it can interact with what is going on in the outer world because he knows, in essence, the mother has his back. This is where that saying comes from. If you are to embrace someone from the front, you want to comfort them, then lay your hands on the lower part of their back. Instinctively, your hands will want to move, one between the shoulder blades and one in the lower back, if you are wanting to bring comfort and support. Now, even if you are in a public setting, and you know that perhaps one is sitting by you and may be feeling slightly uncomfortable. It's a very simple act for you to turn and reach with the energy in your own hand to their being with just one touch across the base of the spine and instantly they have the sensation of reinsurance. I would suggest to you to experiment with this. Not only with the children, but with each other, because it's just as powerful with adults. And the elderly, as your aged population, they are living longer, that is well known. Again, this is a place where you can comfort them. You will find that many masseurs are now being taught. Now, this is the new, the new idea of massage. They are now being taught to work around these areas deliberately with specific motions of the hands in those particular areas. Now I will also elaborate and say to you that the females generally will carry what you call stress in their pelvis, yes. The males tend to do it more in their shoulders. It's more of a masculine idea. It can be the reverse. It depends what's going on. But irrelevant of the sex of the gender, this works. This works for every single person. 
Is that helpful, or is there more you would like? Oh, that's great insight. I mean, the the activity that came to my mind there would be um, it's a quite a fun one when um, people do it, and it's something I did recently actually, and they were quite surprised how trusting I was. And that is when you have somebody pushing you backwards, and you have someone behind you catching you, but very softly, you know, stopping you forward. So it's allowing that trust to go on your back. That just popped into my head when you mentioned that as an exercise. But do you have any other more examples of exercises maybe adults can do rather than um, people with children? Yes, this, this applies. What I just suggested to you, it does apply to adults as well. Although they are more inclined to spread the comfort further along the back, as I said, between the shoulder blades and to the base of the spine. There's many things as adults, if you are aware of this, that you can do to even simulate it. The energy of the human hand, of the human body, it is a great healer. It is not always necessarily appropriate. You do not have someone at the ready to come and bring you that kind of support 24 hours of your day. But there are things that you may do for yourself to bring yourself comfort in those areas. Many of your females will understand as they move through their menstrual cycles, if they feel something such as a warmth, something like what you would call a heat pack, if you place that at the base of your spine, near the hips, it not only relieves the pain that they may be experiencing, but it's almost it's also comforting. It's an energy that you can create for yourself. Now, Kundalini resides here. If you want to activate the Kundalini energy here, you most definitely can do that. If you understand that it comes with the propelling idea. You're propelling, remember that. You're being moved forward. You're not stagnant. You're not being dragged. You're not being driven. You're being propelled. So it's pleasurable. It's a feeling of security. It's very important that humans have these interactions. Even in the idea of just a general everyday hug. The recommendation for a human, interestingly enough, is that if you are to hug, that you do it for between 20 and 30 of your seconds at a time. Now, you all know hugs are very effective. You still do not hug each other enough. This will change. But yes, there are many ways that you can create energy from Understanding the movement of propelling. Knowing you're being propelled, that support is already there. That energy is there. You, do, you need to do nothing else to enhance it unless you choose to. Unless you need to three-dimensionally put something in that area of your body to support it. You see it often. Those who drive your cars, they put a back support there. It's an area that does it often needs attention. People understand it as being an ailment. And very often it's not. It's just a need for comfort. It's a sign that the body is saying, I need support. For perhaps you do need support for whatever it is you are taking on. Well, there's one thing I love to do, and it's, um, it's actually having a certain chair and being able to where I take myself backwards. I find this one of the most comfortable positions I can be in for work. My legs have got to be up on the desk, and I can work and do stuff for hours and hours when I'm in this position. It's really weird. I don't know why. I don't know if it has any re relevance, but this position um, it just seems to be really efficient for me. But Christina yeah. asks, um, can that work with equines, with horses? <laughs> It is a tad more difficult, but it can be done most definitely. It depends on the relationship between the human and the horse. Horses will sure, surrender. I understand that. Yeah. They will most definitely surrender to the idea of support. They're used to having a human on their backs 
they're used to carrying. This is them being driven. Now, if you can get a horse to understand that they also have the choice to be propelled, you may propel them into relaxation, into an idea of massage. Now, horses are receptive to this, but only with particular humans. A horse will actually be willing to lay on its back and allow you to work on its underside. A side of the, the horse's body that is rarely ever to spoken about, ever touched, unless there is a calf involved. But the horses, yes, it is very effective for them also. If the horse is willing to allow you to place your energy in those areas, yes. Okay, perfect. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Alma, talk. What about other uh, common animals? Cats, dogs, normal, normal animals people have. What about their energies? Yes, the pets. This will be pets. Yes, then. Yes, please. Yes, yes. You, I am sure you have all been informed at some place or time that massage, as such. Is very beneficial for your pets. Now, as far again, it's, it is only different in size. A horse, as opposed to perhaps a feline, for a human to reach out to a horse and offer this kind of support because of the size, it's a lot riskier than it is to move to one of your feline cats that are smaller and make the attempt to introduce massage. It is like any being, any incarnate being on your planet. If it is brought into the planet with the understanding that this area is pleasant when it is touched, that it creates you comfort, even the animal populace, it is all encompassing. This is true. For all incarnate life, even your sea life, many of your sea life enjoy being touched. I'll give you the example of your dolphins. As, as you stroke your dolphins, you get down past the fin, they quite enjoy that for the same reason. It is a very important part of any three-dimensional mass to understand how to support it energetically. So yes, pets, of course, yes. As kittens, as puppies, even your young turtles, yes. <laughs> yes, they enjoy it also on their underside. Do it from their youth. Then as they grow, they will become more relaxed and they will even move towards you with motions and request that you do interact with them in this way. Humans could learn much from the animal kingdom who do ask for this kind of affection because humans have as much right to receive this kind of support also. And also, Value the idea of being propelled. Hello, Alma Talk. Hello. Um, I have a question. You're talking about support, and I'm curious to know um, what if a person has a a, a, a chemical uh, lack in, in their brain which causes depression. Uh, how would you know would touching the base of their spine affect them in a different ways because usually if there's a person that has a chemical depression their brain function is completely different than a normal person's brain function yes, yes my friend yes this is very true it is amplified when you touch one such as you described in these areas it is amplified now, it is also something that I would recommend that you do on a regular basis for beings that are experiencing what you call a chemical imbalance. Touch. 
Touch even for those of you who are very physically limited. Touch is very important, even, even if you have no sensation. Let us use an example where perhaps you have lost sensation on the lower part of your body. Now, if visually you can see that though you have no sensation in this part of your body, visually you can see if one is touching you here and your brain will register touch, it will register the energy. It's very powerful. So for those who are, yes, not being so much propelled, for if they're in this state, they are much more being dragged through their lifetimes. Then yes, any kind of touch for these beings is very important. Frequent and anywhere on the body. It's one of the most healing things you can do to rebalance the chemical composition within your brains with the idea of these mental illnesses. The more contact, the better. What about uh, the people's motivation? Like you say, that um, it's very important when you wake up, you know, you're energetically propelled, you know, the energy propels you. But for someone that has like a medical uh, depression, when they wake up, the first thing they don't think about doing is, you know, getting up. The first thing is usually like a, uh, is, is usually like a thought pattern that is um, not necessarily negative, but it's like, oh, I don't want to get up. Yes. Yes. And what if your first thought was that you were going to be touched in this area? Instantly, the brain, brain chemistry will change. Before you even need to lift your head off your pillow. If there is one there who may touch you in this way. In fact, many of you enjoy the idea of spooning, what you call spooning, and this is why. That position in itself, it generates so much energy of propellant into the receiving being. Now, if you wake up depressed and you have one, who will touch you in this way, you will feel if you lay there for long enough, your brain chemistry will adjust. You will begin to wake well. You will feel a little more peaceful, a little less anxious, and you will be more willing. The prep being propelled will begin and then the motivation to move outside of the bed, even outside from your blankets. It will evolve, it will come naturally, it's something you will be willing to do. Where the opposing idea would perhaps be if you were alone and not experiencing the interaction of, of touch, then yes, of course. In a depressed state, finding the motivation to move yourself, to get out of your beds, it is understandable. This would be a great challenge. This is the power of touch and it is the power of this area of the body. It is the support and the propellant. If you have nobody to touch you, can you touch yourself? Yes. You most definitely can touch yourself. There's many ways you can do this, my friend. You can use one of what you call your pillows. You may use a particular kind of what you call cushion. Now, you could actually use this, this whatever it is you choose, something that is soft, something that is comfy, something that feels nice. The texture against your skin is very pleasant. And place it at the base of your back. Now, I would even suggest that perhaps if it's not something so large that you roll, just simply roll yourself back onto one of these items so that you feel it in this part of your body. You feel this kind of pressure. It stimulates automatically that feeling, that comfort. Once you do that, you allow yourself to do that, you will find naturally your mind will work 
to the idea of wakening and getting yourself up and out of bed. So as asleep, yes, you may do it when you are alone. I would also say to you, whatever it is you choose to use, do some meditation with this article. Let's see what the cushion. Do some meditation with this cushion. Allow this meditation to become a part of your auric field. Become friends with this particular mass that is going to share an energy form with you. Essentially what it will do is channel an energy form for you. You will create it because your brain will naturally respond. It's reciprocal. There's many things you can do. As I said, heat is very often felt pleasurable in that area. So alone as a depressed person, this is a way around it. Yes, most definitely. It is important too to understand that you are no less than anyone else on the planet just because you are laying in a bed alone. I do not wish to impose that idea. People who live what you call independently and they do not share their bed or their abodes with another that they feel that they can have such intimacy with. It's commonplace, unfortunate perhaps for the moment, but yes, it's commonplace. But you most certainly may serve yourself with self-support and embracing whatever it is you use as part of yourself, infusing your ability to propel into this item as you use it in this area of your body. Is that helpful? Um, well, I'm going to have to try a false ball. Yes, thank you. Yes, please try it. Okay, <clears throat> okay Shir, would you like to go next? Yes. How are you, Anuta? Sure. Hello. How are you? Uh, I'm wonderful. Uh, I have a couple of questions. Um, the first one is about the Intifada, what is going on in Israel. It's uh, been six months this week for the inf since the Intifada started. The war between the, the Israeli Arabs and Israel basically, yeah. and it seems that according to, to some predictions of different politicians, it's going to be even a year or maybe more. Is there something that maybe you can say about it? Sure. Yes, I, I hear the sadness in your voice. I see this brings your vibration down very low and I understand why. Harm to another human, this does not resonate with you. Sadly, in this part of the world, harm upon another human is not always valued. And that's the reflection that you're seeing and you know this. This has been going on on your planet for centuries. There is no quick fix to this idea, my friend. It will be at least one of your years before you see anything significant. There will be much talked about. There will be promises made, but it comes down to whether or not those promises are kept. Mm. Yeah, I know what you're speaking of. Yes. Yes, it, it, it is something that the rest of the world is watching, as you know, very aware as always in your part of the world. And there are actually many humans who are meditating on magic to heal your part of the world. I don't know if you're aware of that, but this is happening on a regular basis. And I'm talking to you about hundreds and thousands of humans on your planet who are meditating to bring peace to the parts of the world that are at war. Mm. This is going to bring you change. It will bring you change. It perhaps may come in a very unexpected way, 
it may almost seem like divine intervention because of this collective energy that's being sent to the cease of your wars. But my friend, yes, it is very unlikely that anything will come to a peaceful point within the next year. Yeah, I know. I guess. Um, my other question, uh, I was told by one of my uh, galactic family um, that sometimes I go and visit him, but it seems that uh, I'm breaking up very easily and all I could say the last time was hi and also I wasn't aware of that, but I'm asking if there's a way to strengthen my astral projection. I guess. To strengthen the projection or is it the re remembrance? Um, both, but mostly so I could actually have a conversation and I know that remembering is a, a whole other story that I don't know if I have any power over it. Yes. Yes. So there's many different ways that this may happen. You may astrally travel to another that is somewhere else on your planet, but there is also a way to design an astral meet. Now there may be one of you, let us use you as an example, that wishes to reach out to another that is from somewhere else, even in your galaxy. Mm -hmm. They too may astrally travel and you can agree to meet in the astral. This is actually a lovely experience. It is a dance. You are in, obviously, zero gravity. You are connected to your bodies by the grand silver veils, the light ropes, as you would call them, the threads, back to your bodies. They remain. But in astral, when you have a visitation, it is very much a vibrational interaction. It is telepathic, it is peaceful, and it is something you will not forget. You will remember what it looked like. Let us say you asked to meet around your planet Mars, and you set that intention. And you may even have communication immediately before and immediately after. This is perfect. It's a perfect way to practice. But for any human who ever can attain this, it is life-changing. This is memorable. There is no way you can possibly forget this experience. It is life-changing. So I would say to you, Sher, with the astral travel, be clear about who it is you want to travel to? Are they aware that you want to travel to them? Do you want to meet in a particular place? Do you want them to come to you? How do you want this occurrence to happen? Yeah. It's very important if you're going to interact with another that you set the intention. Once you set the intention of how you wish it to be, then practice. Practice. You so. can astral travel, show. Sure. You can do it. You need the feedback from another. It's time to call in another and do some of this practice. I see. So I need to be very specific about it or just say I want to go to that bean and have a conversation or I need to say uh, I want to go to that place and that I will go to him or he will come to me. Or I need to be as much specific. Or... Yes, in the beginning as you are learning Yes, it is important to be specific because you need to be able to measure your progress. Mm -hmm. So you need to have this idea both in your set of intention and the intention of the other that you want to create this with. So in the beginning, yes, share as much detail as you can as far as the intention, how you wish to interact, what do you want it to look like. Where do you want to meet? Any details that you feel resonate. Even in the idea that perhaps it may be a lover on the other side of the world. 
you can practice this. So in the beginning, lay out the intention together. Then come back afterwards, give each other the feedback. Mm -hmm. Do you feel you interacted? Do you feel you didn't? If not, let's try another way. You will know. You will get some idea. Perhaps you have crossed paths. So you know then simply you just need to bring yourself back to a closer meeting point. You may even choose ways to identify each other. Interestingly enough, humans, when they ask to travel, at times, if they are simply doing it for their own enjoyment, and they are exploring the idea of space as if the photographs that you see, you share, of what is in your out of space. You may be having a very pleasurable time exploring and then another being may appear. And you may glide past each other, recognize each other and go on with your business. This is something that many humans do not expect. But it is what you would call a very happy coincidence when it does happen. I see. And so just setting intentions every time I go to sleep. Yes. Yes, okay. and share, share the intention. Unless it is simply a visitation that you want to make, share the intention with another. Yeah. He's on another planet, so <laughs> we don't uh, speak of them. Very good. Whatever it is that you choose, yes. I see. And I also want to ask if you or my guides or my higher self has any messages or something uh, that you want to say to me. Yes. Yes. You have a spirit guide at the moment. It is a male spirit guide. He is middle-aged. He's moving in very close to your auric field at the moment. He's supporting you. He's playing a paternal role at this point. But the moments when you are feeling a little, uh, yes, we spoke of the chemical imbalance. The moments when you feel that you may be slightly depressed, that what you see around you is affecting your vibration and the frequency that you wish to remain at. This spirit guide is working with you to keep you picking you back up, keep elevating you, reminding you this is the level at which you may exist. You do not have to live down here. You may lift yourself to here. That is the purpose of this particular guide right now. Is it very like close. Is he a new spirit guy or? No, he is an old spirit from your spirit group. Yes, he identifies to me in this way because this is how he wishes for you to identify him. He is part of your spirit group that has recycled through many lifetimes with you. And in this lifetime, the agreement was that you would be come in as a homo sapien, and he would remain in spirit as one of your spirit guides. But it is one, of course, being that it is of your spirit realm mm -hmm. that has the best of intentions for you and understands exactly what your purpose is here on this planet and will guide you well. I see. And does he has a name or something that they can call upon him? Pimash. You may call on him as Pimash. How? Pimash. Pimash? Yes. P? Yeah. P for pink. P for pink. I. M. A. S. C. H. P. Mars. P. Mars, yes. Use the accent mm -hmm. if you choose, yes. Okay, thank you very, very much and much love. You're welcome, much love, sir.
Okay, now we have Sean. Hello, Alma Talk. I'm so happy to talk to you again. Hello, Sean. How are you? Oh, I'm doing great. I have a couple questions um, uh, regarding the uh, leadership that you were, or excuse me, the talent that you were talking about. I'm at present in a leadership position or a leadership role. I have the opportunity to do, do so in my own hometown. I am um, having some trouble stepping into that, and I was told to reach into a, another experience I'd had in the, you know, uh, in another life. Yes. Can you help me tap into, uh, you know, give me some guidance about leadership, talent, and inspiration also. Yes, yes. My friend, can you elaborate a little more on what kind of leadership is required for, of you? Is it directives or is it something that you may do as demonstration? Can you demonstrate the leadership or must you be giving what you would call orders, requests, demands? Um, it's both. Right now we're in a planning period and I have to um, inspire people and I have to be inspired. Um, ah. And then, yeah, and then that's going to... Uh, come to mm. fruition as something that we're going to have to act actively do as well. Yes. And as the leader, would it be you that is initiating the inspiring of others? Is that what would be required of you? Um, maybe not the main one, no. Thank goodness. <laughs> yeah. There is a magic in inspiration. As I just said, Sean, leadership is best done with Homo sapiens by demonstration. Lead by example, especially as your species evolve. They will reject less and less the idea of having to be answerable to authority. It takes away choice. Now when you want to inspire someone, this is reciprocal practice. This is actually a wonderful dance of frequency. Initially, yes, you may do need to call upon the energy of what drives you. There is a purpose here for that. Once you define that you need to find a way to drive you to become this leader, and to become the inspirer, what will naturally come from that is those that you inspire, you are going to see this, you are going to feel the change very deeply. Shrug, this will touch you. You will see the change, you will see the inspiration. There, here comes the reciprocal energetic exchange. You inspire others, this touches you deeply. You feel inspired to continue doing what you are doing. You find wonderful new ways to lead. You find amazing new ways to inspire. Here will be your talent and here is your genius. Does that answer your question? Um, yes, partly, and um, also, like I said before, they mentioned to reach out to the experience that I'd had in another life for leadership. Could you tell me how to tap into that a little bit more? Yes, yes. Yes, you can do that, my friend. Again, there are several options. One of them, of course, is to request that you have an experience of that idea in your dream time. Again, go back as I often tell you, with your relationships with your subconscious minds and your unconscious ones in dream state, you may make the request of your spirit realm also to take you to that place so that you may tap into that leadership experience. Now there is another way. You may actually journey yourself through a trance-like experience to find this by yourself. You do not necessarily need another party for this to happen, particularly for you, Sean. This is something that very much resonates with you. In your case, you would be able to place yourself into a state of trance. Now, 
there's very many ways for you to do that but in your case Tron I would ask you to use the colors of the chakras now as you relax your body of course you're going into trance you need to be safe and you need to be comfortable so a laying down position perhaps would be most appropriate now as you move yourself deeper into the trance idea move through the colors of the chakras start out with the crown chakra now I want you to trust your instincts here there are the typical colors of the chakras but I want you to trust your instincts on your perception of the chakras at that point when you want to take yourself into this trance like state move through the colors see them as they approach you feel them as you move through them and then see the next one with each color you move deeper and deeper and deeper into a state of true trance now you may guide yourself you may design yourself a hallway a hallway of doors of anything of your choice and one of these entry points that you choose because this is your intention is going to be the one that is going to give you the experience from that lifetime of what leadership felt like this is self regression it's not something that everyone can do but you most definitely can the important part is to get yourself into the trance like state you can be creative with how you find this lifetime as I said you can use the idea of a hallway or you can simply arrive there at a set of stairs and at the top is a doorway that you open and you move through and you will find exactly what it is you need there your subconscious will guide you you may even find that it's going to show you something that has brought through fear of leadership into this lifetime and then you may clear the fear it may not necessarily be that you need to revisit a leadership position it is more likely to be that you are needing to clear the fear around one you had in the past and therefore that will be amplified into your current lifetime in this now does that make sense absolutely thank you so much you're very welcome I would just like to add to that if I can hmm. what is the difference on the talk between the astral projection that you're talking about and shamanic journeying very little very little it is language and it is also about story time so it is belief systems that is all mm -hmm. all humans at the spiritual level have their own perception of what their spirit is so defining yourselves as that whatever you call the experience of travel outside of the body it is simply a name but it is the same experience it's just created differently thank you very much and now can we check Kim for fluids please on the talk we don't want you to go away yes <clears throat> yes one moment yes let's okay. continue thank you okay thank you very much and now we have Christopher who would like to ask a question please yes. thank you Valerie 
Hello, Alma Talk. How are you, Christopher? Here. Hello, Chris. I'm fine. I thank you for giving me the opportunity to share. Um, yeah, I was just interested, Alma Talk, on what you said in your opening line and um, lost in the conditioning. Yes. And uh, I could totally relate to that statement. And um, sometimes I see myself uh, sleepwalking through this life. And, uh, yes. Yeah, I ask myself a question. Um, actually, before I sleep at night, and it's it's the first thought I wake up with in the morning. Is it going to be a positive or a negative thought? You know. Yes. And I'm, I'm consciously is aware. Is it for you? Um. Yeah, it is working now. Um, because I'm bringing it to my conscious awareness. Um, so. A lot of the time, I will wake up and I won't go, I won't fall back into the old conditioning, as as they say, like you know. Um, uh, but um, I'm I'm just I'm trying to basically unlearn um, everything that this really society has taught me. Really, you know, um, the conditioned mind really has taken me places that uh, can be. Yeah. Chris. Are you being dragged? Are you being driven? Or are you yes. propelling? Yes. This is a question to ask yourself. It sounds to me as though there is some struggle, there is some dragging. Yes. It's absolutely okay to trust that when you wake that you will feel also not only have positive ideas, but that you will have a full body experience of propelling you. It is not that you are expected to leap out of your beds in joy. No. Although if you do, that would be wonderful. Yes. It is far simpler than that. It is simply being in the wakeful state, enjoying it for the moments that you have, and then moving, move, wait for that propelment, wait for it to, to actually manifest. It will come, it will come, and then move. That will become a much more effective cycle for you the more that you practice it. Okay. But I really do, I want to say this to you, Chris. I really do want you, when you wake, I want you to spend some time just reflecting on yourself. Now, I know that you have set the intention the evening before for you to be in this wakened state that you choose. When you wake, I want you to reflect on that, please. Even if it is you use your pencil and paper and you make notes of the first few thoughts the sensations, the feelings as you come to wakefulness. I feel that this is where perhaps there is a little bit of disconnect. This is easily repaired, but it first needs to be identified. Once you identify it, Chris, you are well informed. You will know how to alter it. It will take some time, but you will train your subconscious to get beyond what this tiny small hurdle, it's not a block, it's just an adjustment. So that then you, you may wake in the state of feeling propelled. It is very possible for you to do this, Chris. Thank you, Mama Tung. You're welcome, my friend. Thank you. Okay, David? If you're ready, you can go next. All right. Hello, Amatok. Hello. Um, I'm currently in a transitioning process um, out of my day job to become a full-time channel. Um, I feel a little bit stuck there still due to some contracts, um, but I feel more and more events are lining up uh, that are nudging me in that direction. So before I give you too much detail, I would like just to have your personal um, first impression you're having on the energy field that I'm currently in and how I uh, most easily can transition there. Thank you. Yes, 
I would just like to get clear on your question, my friend. You are working towards using channeling as your full-time, what you call your full-time work. Is that correct? Yes, it's correct. Thank you. Yes. So you are moving from a classically three-dimensional idea into a higher-dimensional one, correct? You would call it that, yes. 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 And you would like some feedback on where you are in this yeah, if I should speed the process up to move faster there, or should do it faster, or if I should um, still keep it the way it's right now, or just yeah, just what your impression is, what you can see in energy field right now. Yes, 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 my friend. Right now, the way that you are doing this, the way you are transitioning, it is perfect. You chose this for a reason. I can see the propel behind you. It is very clear. Allow yourself to propel, but also be mindful. You are being moved from being driven. Okay? This is a big mm -hmm. energy change. So allow yourself to do it slowly because it involves many three dimensional ideas and needs at the same time. Now, you will yes. lead towards success, but you may need to spend more time in this transition period. Okay. Also, also, my friend, within this transition period, there is still some lesson there there for you. So just be mindful as you move through the transition that there may be some events that happen that may cause you to reflect. You might feel you need to correct. You might need to just waver a little bit, slow things down, speed them up, whatever it is. But there is some journeying for you to be had before you do this is what you call your full-time experience. Okay. I will pay attention to that. Thank you. Yes. You're welcome. Much love. Hello, I'm a talk. Dan, hello. Have a couple of questions from members. Yes. One member, uh, Stephen, asks uh, he would like to ask about what kind of beings he was interacting with in his dreams last night. Says he felt a large energy shift in his dream, and from when he woke up today, did that have anything to do with his energetic body? So this is uh, about the energy, an energy question about what what's going on with him. Yes. Stephen, Stephen, he is very interactive, very interactive with the alien world. And yes, a lot of it does happen in his dream time. Stephen has many alien friends. Sometimes new ones will arrive and they're the ones that he will feel that they are different and they're the ones that he's going to notice the most. All his life, Stephen has experienced these kinds of interactions. Now, this is a new new frequency. It's a new vibration that's come to him, obviously. Otherwise, he would not be asking the question. Now, he knows that. Yes, he was interacting with an alien being. Now. It was a positive interaction with a form of reptilian. But I want to emphasize, it was a positive interaction. So this is the energy that he had this experience with. This was the manifestation of it. And I would say to him to welcome it. Yes. Okay, thank you for that have a question from Jasmina. She would like to know uh, about her job situation, if you have any tips for her, and mm. is there an end? And if she will find something else and if she will like it. So she, she's worried about her future energy, so to speak. Yes, yes, yes. Jasmina is naturally a very creative and talented lady. She has the gift of the voice. She has the talent of the actor, the actress. Now, she also is holding herself back. She's one who is propelled. 
But she is putting boundaries in place, as I spoke of, believing that her talents are limited and they are not. Now this is twofold in this instance. One, so that she may release this limitation, understand that she is talented on her own and that she is a genius in this idea but also if she's moving into more of the three-dimensional world she needs to look as you said for a job she needs to create more currency stability I understand the necessity of this in many of your lives and it is a transitional stage as I just spoke of for Jasmina she will find other work she can if she does pick up the cues from the universe she will find the kind of work that still entails what her natural talents are so she may actually work for an institution that perhaps teaches what her natural talents are I would encourage her to try to, to move herself, use the propel idea as she chooses where she looks for her employment. Now, this sounds limiting. I understand that. But in her situation, in Jasmina's situation, her, she is very much a being who resonates with the idea of the sound of the voice. The ability to tell a story with the body. This is her realm. This is her area. So she is very likely to gain employment in an institution that is also supporting these ideas. Now this will pr bring her more fulfillment and also more opportunity. So I would just like to ask Jasmina to please look within the bounds of what she does know and love and she knows is her talent and I want to re-emphasize this to her as well. She is a talent on her own. She does not need others. She is a talent on her own. So that would be my message for her. Thank you, Alma Talk. I'm sure that she will really enjoy that. Uh that nice answer and this last question from member Carl wants to know yeah. if you could speak on the idea of exercising one's emotions is it the same as one exercises the body is there benefit from simply trying to connect to your emotions in a stronger deeper way independent from a specific experience so instead of experiencing a bunch of emotions to actually sit in a calm quiet like a meditative state and then just kind of go through your emotions just like sitting down and saying I'm gonna practice feeling gratitude or without thinking yeah. of anything specific to be grateful for and he wants to know is this the same idea as an athlete increasing their ability to push or pull or something in the gym without applying it to their specific sport so he wants to know if if yes. working with the emotions will be a benefit definitely in Carl's case I will suggest this to him. We need to use a bit of element of surprise for Carl. Carl, please take a list of emotions. You may create it yourself or ask somebody else that you know quite well to make a list for you of emotions. Now you do not have to share what the list is for. If you're doing it yourself, obviously you will know. Now once you've done this, I want you to put them on separate pieces of your paper or whatever it is that you would prefer to use and I want you to fold them so you may not see them, put them into a tumbler and when the time comes that you wish to sit and work out your emotional life, have some breaths at the feeling, dip your fingers into the jar and pull out something magical. It will be an emotion that will be absolutely appropriate. This will help with the resonance. This will help the, with the resonance of his day, his week or his next interaction. This also encompasses then the spirit realm who will support him with this idea. Then yes, sit and meditate on the emotion. Reach 
for the emotion. Feel the emotion. Remember that it's not always going to be something that may come truly positive in the beginning. You may have to work through some negative ones first. You might find that you're reaching for something like joy, but you may only get to a point of slight happiness in the beginning. This is a trust building exercise for Carl. A trust building in himself. He is very bright in coming up with this idea. He understands where it is he needs to work. So he will get there. But please, Carl, do not be discouraged. If you choose a grand emotion and you are not able to access it immediately, it is a learning process even for the children on your planet. And though you are an adult, there are many, many, many others who are less able to feel than you. But I honour you for taking this on, Carl. And please do it in this way. The meditation is appropriate. But the idea of the randomness of the emotions that you choose is going to be very important. It's going to give you feedback on much more than what you realise. Thank you, Alma Talk. Um, he, he's not in in the chat, but uh, I'm sure he appreciates that great answer. Thank you. Uh, I believe Sarah is next. Hello, Alma Talk. Nice to Hello, see you, Sarah. Sarah. Um, How are you, my friend? Well, I I'm back and forth, <laughs> but um, today I'm okay. Um, I was wondering about some news I received uh, just yesterday, if all of that is real. Um, I don't know, I feel like I'm, it, it's just too big of a hope at the moment, and I'm just like, please let it be real, whatever. <laughs> yes. Yes. And is there a question around that, or just yes, an elaborate? Yes, around that. Around yes. that. Is, is it real? <laughs> if you would like it to be real, absolutely, Sarah. You are a master manifester, Sarah. This is one of your talents. If you wish it to be manifested in your three dimensional life, then yes, my friend, you shall do so. Okay, I wish for it. And one more question. <laughs> yes. Um, I keep going back over the idea of a being named Sutu Ranak. Could you repeat the name, please? Oh, Sutu Ranak. That's what it is. Sutu yes. Ranak. Yes. Who is yes. that? It is actually an ancient Tibetan monk. One that was very highly respected. He was one that could actually achieve the idea of levitation, true levitation. Very connected to Gaia. Yes. This is why he is coming to mind for you. Yes. It is about the idea of gravity, Sarah. Gravity shifts. There is a lot of magnetic field change alteration going on around the planet. and There will be for the rest of this year, perhaps up until your 11th month. And this being, this being has mastered the way in which Gaia operates around the idea of gravity and the magnetic fields and how it affects and can transcend the individual. What he wants to share with you is that exact same reflection. He would like you to be able to be in that highest position yourself and not feel incredibly dragged down by what you are sensing from Gaia. You're very sensitive to Gaia, as was he. 
The guy is going to go through what she needs to go through. She is part of a massive multiverse. She has her own journey. You have your journey with her. So please take on the idea of how this wonderful man, this human was exceptional, was able to find a way to propel himself even when he thought he had to be driven. The idea of levitation, now this is the distinction, the idea of levitation, he was driving himself to achieve it. Once he dropped the idea of driving himself to achieve it, he understood that he could be propelled to move towards that that he resonated with. It became non-specific. It became an energetic interaction. Now that energetic interaction, coincidentally in his case, turned into the idea of the absence of gravity and he was able to levitate. This is a theory I would like you to integrate to your three-dimensional life, your relationship to Gaia and you being able to keep yourself stable, creating miracles around you and not being so susceptible to what is going on with Gaia. It's it is not asking you to love Gaia any less, to serve Gaia any less. You will actually serve Gaia far greater if you take on the ideas of this one because you will be a stabling force for her. Does that answer your question? Yes, I'm actually happy you said something else because what I was getting before was he was my soul. And I wasn't quite sure about that. Um, you are very familiar with each other, yes. Okay, but he's not my soul. No. No. Okay. That's what I wanted to understand. And thank you for that explanation. It makes a lot of sense to me. So <laughs> very good. I'm glad. Thank you. It's been bothering me for three weeks. <laughs> oh, my goodness, Sarah. <laughs> propel yourself, propel yourself, please. Thank you. Much love. Much love. Okay. Hello, Almatok. Um, Hello. Yes, Hello. go ahead. Hello, Almatok. Yes. Yes, hello, my name is Curly. I just have a short question because um, I have to leave after that. So uh, I'm very happy to meet you and uh, I would like to know if you can make a short uh, um, a reading of my soul maybe and if I'm, I, I am evolving, evolving correctly right now. Yes. May Thank I ask your name? Was it Curly? Curly, yeah. Curly. Yes, yes, my friend, you are most definitely on the path, the okay. path that you designed for yourself and this is how you may measure that. You have come to ask this question. Yes, that and what was my soul reading right now? What can you see? My friend, what you would call a soul, it is something that I view from a different viewpoint. From where I reside, the idea is that there is source and there is higher self and there is spirit realm. There yeah. is no reading for you are creating. There is no reading because you have free will. Whatever it is that another tells you about your future, it is always involving the variable that you may change your future as you choose. Now, if you want that to be your soul reading, then please take it upon yourself that you have free will, there are always variables, and you may strive for greatness in whatever it is you choose to do. You are a wonder of a human being that has come in on this planet. You are a spiritual being. You are connected 
to every other being on this planet and vibrationally you exist everywhere. So as you move forward and you move with the support of your spirit realm and you interact with them and you interact with the greatness that is in you, you shall stay in your path. You will be okay. propelled and you will move forward more to make inquiries such as this. Okay. And what kind of mission do I have? Or Because uh, it's very hard to uh, try to find one So on Earth. Yes, I do feel, I do yeah. feel very strongly that you yeah. have an affinity with the spirit realm. In mm -hmm. fact, I would even say to you, if you can use, adjust the idea, adjust your belief system. Now again, this is free will. This is your choice. This is simply a suggestion. If you adjust your belief system and you can come to the idea that you do not have simply just a soul, that you do have several beings that work for you in your spirit realm and understand that every other incarnate being on the planet is the same. Mm -hmm. If you can grasp that, you will be able to move more into the field of working in spirit. You will mm -hmm. be able to contact spirit. You will be okay. able to interact with spirit. Yes. It would be great. Okay. Yeah. And what kind of beings are around me right now who helps me? Star people, I don't know. Yes, I may not tell you too much. This is a public deliverance and it does not always serve the humans to know. Uh. But I will tell you mm -hmm. that at the moment that there are five beings in spirit around you, they are actually very pleased that you are here and that you have come to ask this question because they wish to be recognized. Okay, thanks them so lot. So. And tell them, yes. tell them I love them. <laughs> yes, you just did. Thank my you work. for your help. Yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. And I'm ready to work with you more. So. Wonderful. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. And now we have Stephen H. Hello, Amatak. Hello, Stephen. How are you doing? <laughs> I'm well. How are you? Oh, I'm doing just peachy. Getting more close to instantaneously manifesting my reality. Wonderful. Wonderful. Um, thank you. Thank you. Um, I was wondering uh, uh, if you could give me a current update on the infusions uh, that I'm currently uh, uh, having, if you could, please. Did you say infusions? Uh, yeah, I've got a couple of them uh, that are going on. I was just wondering what, if, if I can get an update on them. Yes. Are these ones from Greg Near or are they from elsewhere? Um, I believe I believe they're from elsewhere. I had, uh, originally it was the Mantis was the start and then uh, I asked for Lyran uh, DNA and then uh, also uh, um, another one. Yes. The Lyran is the strongest. Uh, I will say that in the visual, I'll give you a visual here. You have a feline. I'm keeping this basic. You have a feline and let us say you have a mantis. Now, it's very important for the denser and the heavier DNA to be integrated, fully integrated, before you add another. Now, the insectoid, the mantis DNA, that is going to be something that will just be lightly sitting over. It will culminate, but it will have less less activity than the Lyran will. You will notice change, but not quite as much. Now the third one, the fact that you're not sure about that yourself, I feel very strongly, Stephen, that that is possibly one that would not serve you. I would reconsider. But firstly, the Lyran, yes, it's on its way well and truly to being done. And then, yes, the Mantis will come. All right, sweet. Thank you. Um, 
Uh, also, uh, I was wondering, uh, uh, I, there's a uh, Neil channel to Gnome not too long ago, and uh, and I felt a very good connection, very strong connection with the Gnomes. I was wondering if you could, uh, you know, dive in a little bit uh, into any of my connections uh, with the Gnomes here on Earth or any of my lifetimes as a Gnome. Yes, Stephen. As a child, in many of your lifetimes, as a child, you have interacted with gnomes. Not only have you interacted with them, there was a lifetime where you actually made simulated shapes of them and that you were part of the whole idea of where humans were placed in the of a gnome in their gardens. I am taking you back centuries here where the gnomes began a, a story that was vastly told and the humans around started to have experiences with gnomes. Now you were already resonating with the gnomes at that time and you were seeing them visually, not just seeing the mischievous little things that they get up to. In fact, this is even before your storytelling time of the seven dwarfs. Now the seven dwarfs originally were to be seven gnomes. I know this is something that many humans don't know. But this was even before that occurrence. So you were one who actually brought to life, as do some of your artists with your cartoons. The gnomes in a visual sense, the garden gnomes, and also the idea, Stephen, of the traveling gnomes. The gnomes that are taken and traveled around the world, and there are photos that are taken of the gnomes. You are connected with all of that. This is the playfulness. So the gnomes, yes, they are very much a part of this lifetime, though in the past, they were something that made you quite well known because you were able to create the image of them. Yes, yes. Yeah, thank you for that. Yeah, I, I love, I love the gnomes. They're so cool. Yes. Uh, uh, do you have any uh, on a deeper level? Do you have more information about my Mars connection? I've been feeling very strongly in uh, Earth Gaia. Uh, um, uh, it, when the, there's this lady that talked about the beginning of Earth or whatever and uh, so, talks about her uh, Gaia's, Mother Gaia's connection with Mars uh, when they're more of a creational, when they're being created and stuff, more sister-brother type energies. Um, I was just wondering, uh, I, know, I, know a little, I, know, I know a little bit about my Mars connection, uh, even been physically on Mars, I was told. I mean, have I been physically, uh, my body been on any other planets? Uh, that you can tap into? Not your body, my friend. Not in this lifetime, no. Astrally, yes. But not your physical body, no. Are you there? Uh, yes. Uh, any, any more info on the Mars thing? Uh, on my connection with Mars, and then that'll, that'll be all. I sure appreciate it. Mm, certainly. Yes. There's much being exposed about Mars at the moment. This, this is going to actually change the human perception of Mars, the planet Mars, and the idea of the Martian. Humans have always been very connected to the planet of Mars. They have an affinity with it. They created characters. They created stories. So Mars and Martians, they are very much accepted already amongst your population. They're not something that you need to be adjusted to. You are already feeling aligned to the idea. So at the moment, as Mars exposes more of her secrets and Earth is coming to understand that there are life forms on Mars, those of you who do feel connected to Mars are going to feel a kind of joy because Mars is going to enjoy actually being seen for what she is by those on the earth. 
those on the earth who are connected to Mars is going to feel that joy. That will be your future interaction, at least in the short term, where there is knowledge that is feeding back now. Obviously, not everything will be made public. I know you will understand this, but you will receive that further information anyway. You will not need to be told by one of your government or military representatives or a photograph from your Institute of NASA of what else is actually being grown and living on Mars. Some will be shared with you publicly, but you will be aware that there is more. So in this way, yes, you are connected to Mars because you are connected to Earth and you enjoy both. Does that make sense? Yes. Very good. Thank you. Much love, Amitai. Much love. Okay, and can we see if you need some kind of fluids at this point? Mm. Yes, thank you. One moment. Her Okay, now we have Stephen S. Hi there, can you hear me? Yes, hello. Beautiful, how are you? Very well, thank you. How are you? Good, thank you for your question or your answer earlier about uh, I guess I have a lot of friends in the astral. Yes. Well, oh, I have a lot of friends everywhere. I seem to enjoy making friends. Um, so, in particular, I was curious um, what exactly are is some of the positive integrative traits of the positive reptilians that I was interacting with last night, why was um, that relevant for it to be present? In recent times, there is, there is more interaction going on between the humans and the reptilians. Now, this is also happening in the channeling world. It's time the reptilians were actually relieved of the reputation that precedes them. Many of the, rep uh, of the reptilians are races that do not mean harm. There are some that, yes, may hold animosities against particular species, but that is true of humans as well. It is all changeable. It is only dangerous for humans to be interacting with reptilians view humans as prey. There are a few of those. And if they do come at this point in your space-time continuum around this planet, there is enough alien projection to simply remove them far enough away that they will not return. Reptilians have big hearts. They say they are cold of blood. But many have big hearts. And that is one constant that runs between many species. It is simply that you are learning how to become relatable to each other. It is also learning to trust. It is also, for many humans, getting over their perception of reptilian species on their own world. Many humans do not like the idea of their snakes or their lizards, even the dinosaurs. They simply do not resonate. And this carries over with the idea of the reptilian races. But in general, they mean no harm. Is that helpful? It is. Um, and months ago when I was connecting with uh, those energies, which is actually related to this question, like I see a lot of um, what appear to be stars or it could be vessels um, in the night sky. And um, months ago I would connect with these and I remember receiving visions. Um, and one, it was a female reptilian and there was a moment where I received 
my heart and her heart connecting and my hand and her hand and her heart. And I'm, I'm curious if that's connected at all to this entity and if that's all connected to the vessels I see because I see it quite frequent. Um, if it isn't, it still is connected in my reality. Yes, it's connected to the vessels, but it is not connected to the recent visitation, though. But yes, definitely to the vessels. This connection that you have with this reptilian being, it is very strong, Steve. Yeah. Um, beautiful. And I felt that. Um, so also I was wondering... Um, what guides are around me? What kind of energy is working with me? Because there's a lot of transformation in my life. I'm uh, working towards my uh, teacher's training for yoga, so I'm just reading constantly about mindfulness and just being open and aware, and I feel like this is possibly why these are coming into my life at this time. Um, what kind of energies are, are working with me that I can tap into and set intentions to connect with more in intently? Mm. At, at this point in time, as far as your own ascension, it is almost limitless. It is up to you. You're mastering your three-dimensional world. And once those of you who live on this planet have mastered much of it, you start to experience things that are from other realms. Now, you are interacting with spirit. You are interacting with three-dimensional mass and the energy that is involved with that the resonance of the spirit, and then you do have alien energies, as you say. You have connection with them. Now, they're working with you also. In fact, they are working with you in the sense that you in future, in your future, perhaps even as far as a future lifetime, you are setting up and creating an existence for yourself that is going to be highly resonant with them. You are journeying towards that now. So your mastery is what's important of these in each individual realms so that when you do reach the final, excuse me, the final destination, you will be prepared and you will have the wisdom now this is also going to be propelling. So stick with the propelling. Use that as your guide. It's wonderful that you are doing the yoga. You are working with some very spiritual and highly evolved masters with your yoga. So you are highly connected. You will go far, so please stay on your path. You are able to have connections with any realm. Thank you. And lastly, I'd like to know if I have, um, well, I don't even need to pose it as a question of do I, because I know. I'd like, if you'd like to share, or if it's relevant and if it resonates, uh, what connections I have with the colonies. Um, I know very little of them, but I know they exist. And uh, I feel like that's something that I would, on spirit level, be heavily uh, engaged with. I feel like I would have a lot to bring to the table. Um, and I feel like it'd just be a very fun and engaging thing. So for me, that just it just kind of makes sense and it resonates. Yes. The reason it resonates, my friend, is because you already are interacting with what's called Colony 2. Colony 2 is where the healing occurs. Now, your yoga mastery and also the fact that you're interacting with these ascended masters in this area makes you a valuable addition to the colonies and vice versa. So, yes, you do have connections to Colony 2 at this point in time. It will not serve you to be visiting on a regular basis at this point. You have much going on around you as it is. When this settles and you become a little more at peace, a little more even keeled with what's going on. Once that rush of energy and activity that's going on all around you and what you are expending and how you are manipulating yourself, your body and your belief systems, it is something that you need to keep here on earth for the moment. You are having interactions with the colony too, but you are not going there yet. You will once everything else is settled down. 
Does that help? It does, and I thank you tremendously, and I send my heart energy to you and everyone that is here, and I will pass the mic. Thank you, my friend. Okay, and Stephen H. has another quick question, if that's okay. Yes. Hi, hi again. Um, hey, I was just wondering uh, when the last time uh, I was on the human colony ship, and I sent my love to my son, Stephen, and just wondering what he was up to. Thank you. Hmm. I cannot address your hybrid son at this point in time. I apologize. Cannot share int information about that. As far as you're going to the colonies, my friend, this is entirely at your will. It's not something at the moment that is happening without your knowledge. It is something that they are waiting for you to request. Once you re request, that you wish to return, then of course you shall. But at the moment they understand, their understanding is that you are happy to be interacting with them less. Now if that is not the case, please correct it and simply make the request that you would like to return again. Oh yeah, yeah, I definitely request. I would like to go every night if possible. Uh, yeah, yeah, definitely. Uh, yeah, they request it. Yeah, definitely request it. Go to all the different colony ships and all the new things going uh, about. Yes, yes. Um, yes, there's uh, some new projects going on Colony 5 at the moment that your knowledge would be very helpful. So it's very likely that you may arrive up there very soon. All right, yeah, definitely. Yeah, I definitely would love uh, to be participating in any, any, any way I can help. Any, any way. I can help. I, I, I'm here. Thank you very much, my friend. That's greatly appreciated. Thank you. Okay, Alma Talk, we'd like to thank you so much for being with us here today. Um, this is Valerie, and I have a really quick question as well. Mm -hmm. um, I was doing my my sewing thing and a lot of times I'm at my desk and I'm just kind of staring off into space and and that's how the ideas come to me well while I was doing this uh, last week uh, staring off into space I seen myself mm. and um, it was kind of a strange experience but I watched myself for quite some time and felt it was kind of funny because another face like popped into the bottom of the screen that I was kind of looking at and in the minute I looked at that face it popped back out and it was kind of like a, a round goofy looking face like a, you know it was funny so I just kind of laughed about it but since then I've, I've thought about that quite a bit could this be the 5D bleeding through? Yes it could be. Okay. Yeah. Okay, I was just wondering. Valerie, uh, please, can I encourage you to continue with that? You are doing a form of conscious meditation, and you are also daydreaming. Yeah, I do so that quite a bit. Like the great <laughs> skills that you have, yes. And so you are receiving wonderful feedback. So congratulations, and I encourage you to continue. Oh, thank you so much. That was very fun. All right. Yes. And it seems as though we're um, nearing the end now, Alma Talk. Do you have any last messages you'd like to give us? Yes, I would just like to just remind everybody to seek what propels them. It is that simple. Enjoy your lives. Find your talents. Embrace your individual, unique genius. I love you all. And thank you very much once more. Oh, Shall I thank leave you. now? Yes, thank you so much. And we love you as well, Emma Talk. We can bring back Kim Louise now. Thank you. Namaste. Oh, namaste. Welcome back, Kim. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> well, 
We've kept Ooh. you pretty busy this morning, <laughs> you and Alma Talk. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thank you so much. Oh, you're welcome. Okay, we'll let you get a drink and we can start blessings if you'd like. Yes, lovely. Okay. Who would like to go first? We have Stephen, we have Sarah. And would either, which one of you would like to start? Ladies first. Okay, Sarah. Salatu Ladni Kiasatia Kututani Tatata no Ko Chatatana Niki Tatata Kei of Shoto Lana Gia Nana Ki O Shataya Tokotuya Asuka Tatata Nukutu Isini Mini Katarala Niki Asa Kututi of Tunaya Kolatai Tutu Shatai Lano Kota Halana kati sa ta tu tu sha ta a ta ta tu 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 shi na 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 ki a sa tu karana ni ki a su kata ya a sha la na ni ki a tu ka i a ta la na u la ni ku tu a ta la tu ku tu sha ta ta shu tu a la ti a na na ku ta ya. A tu kalata lu kutuna, a ma yi a yayanu kutu a yana, a ti a kutu, a salata kutu, a la iata, maya kiata. Namaste. Namaste. Thank you. Stephen? Thank you. Durado Namaste. Thank you, Stephen. Oh, we feel so blessed having everyone here with us today. It's been a beautiful start to a beautiful weekend. So um, if there aren't any messages, I'm not sure. Dan? Did you have anything you wanted to add? I do. I'd like to let everybody know that Kim Louise is available for private sessions. Her information is available on all the sites, the Human Colony, the Multiverse Channelings on YouTube, uh, the Human Colony on YouTube, or not YouTube, on Facebook. Yes, donations are uh, available if you'd like to donate. Um, so um, if you need... well. Actually, I think the information is even available on the YouTube links as well. That, that'll be made available there for those that are on that section of things. The only other announcement I have is that the uh, Reiki 3 class is going to be delayed one week. Instead of starting the 14th, it will be starting the 21st and finishing up on the 28th. And that's all I have for now, unless anybody else has anything. Okay, I'd just like to add that uh, our channelers are open to any gifts of donations that anyone would like to send to them. You can find their information on hukulo.ning or .com. Um, just make sure that you envelope that to who you would like it to go to. Um, we do appreciate your joining us today, and we appreciate anything that you would like to give, and that includes your love as we give our love to you today and every day. So much love to everyone watching, and good day, good weekend. Namaste. Yeah. Thank Namaste. you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you.